What's up guys, ViperFPV here, and today we're going to be doing another build. This is with the DGI system this time. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go over all the components, and then we're going to go ahead and build this quadcopter. And then in a future video, I'll go ahead and release a video with me flying it around and tell you guys how I think how it flew. So let's go ahead and uh, get right to the build. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and go over what we're going to be using for this build. Now, first off, we're going to be doing this with the DGI HD system. And the frame that I picked out um, is does support it. So right here in the back, you have some spots where you can mount it, use zip ties or whatnot, whatever you want to mount in the back here. And another reason why I picked up this frame because it has the solid carbon fiber here for the front camera. I can't stand using TPU ones because I always have problems with vibrations and stuff. Especially with this, you're going to be using that camera for footage. So you want to make sure that's nice and stiff. And it does have... It's really reminiscent of like a flaw style frame in a way, just extended and stretched out um, and a little higher. But that's the frame we'll be using. And I think you can pick this thing up for around $20 to $25. So it's a really inexpensive frame as well. Um, we're also going to be using the K uh, Kakute F7 uh, flight controller HDV, which actually is really awesome because it's plug and play with the DJI system. So you don't have to worry about soldering anything to your flight controller or doing really anything except for just plugging a plug in and you're done. So that's why we went ahead and use this. And for the ESC, we're going to be using the, this is a Mamba um, F40 MK2 high efficiency ESC. Um, this actually came in, I believe, a FPV crate. So that's really the main reason I'm using it. Um, I was looking at it and it does look a really solid ESC. It's a 4 in 1. So that's what we're using there. And then also we have um, a TBS Crossfire receiver. And then the motors we're picking out, we picked out 2207 Zing motors. I actually use the same type of motors in my Marmot, and I really, really love them. And especially since I was able to run those like a 2450 kV without any throttle cutting or anything, I figured that would be a really solid motor to go ahead and use in this build as well. Um, only thing difference is I'm doing 1800 kV. No, that's 1800, 1700 kV because I want to do this on 6S. And since we're using this flight controller, we, they're already regulated down to, I believe, 8 volts. And it has the BEC and everything on the flight controller to be able, so you don't have any brownouts or anything like that when, if you're using an inefficient regulator. So that is pretty much all the parts we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and uh, start building this guy. So the first thing you want to go ahead and do is you want to put the bolts through the bottom plate, as you see here, so we can fit the stack on there. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to be fitting on the spacer so we can put the ESC on top. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we're going to go ahead and install the ESC and we're going to make sure that the power plug is facing to the back so we can have the power plug go through the back. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to install all four motors. I'm just going to show you how to install one at this moment. I'm using Loctite. It just prevents the bolts from loosening up and from vibrating loose. So you can go ahead and use that. Just make sure you don't use the permanent one. Make sure you use the semi-permanent or the temporary one. And just make sure you tighten all four motors down. And then once you're done with all four motors, then we can go ahead and move on to the next step. Now we have all four motors installed. And we're gonna use these zip ties here to hold down the motor wire to the arms on the quadcopter. And I'm just going to go ahead and do is just fit one on each arm. Eventually, I do put uh, two on each arm so it's better supported and it prevents a prop from hitting your wires and destroying your day. Now we're going to go ahead and do is pre-tin the ESC. Uh, just one little tip before you go ahead and put any screws or anything down on the 401 ESC, make sure you you know pre-tin the wires so you just don't melt those plastic spacers and whatnot. Uh, so let's so use some flux. I already fluxed all of the pads on the ESC and I'm going ahead and I'm very carefully adding some solder to all the pads. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut the motor wire and then we're also going to solder the motor wires onto the ESC. Um, it does not matter which way you put the motor wire onto the ESC uh, as we can change the direction in B heli later, which I do have a video on that as well. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do is connect everything up and then we'll move on to the next step.
Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to install the flight controller on top of the ESC. Now that 401 header right there for the connection to the flight controller and the ESC, I did have to repin that for my 401 ESC that I used. Um, so just make sure that you have the proper motor wires going to the proper location on the flight controller on that harness. Um, it's pretty easy to just repin. You just gotta pull it out. Uh, just use like something small and just pull it out, the wire out, and then just pretty much put it back in according to the flight controller's schematics and also the ESC schematics. Then what we're going to do is we're going to connect a 401 ESC header to the flight controller. Let's so make sure the pins are lined up the correct way. As you see, I had to flip it around. And it slides right in and connect it. Now we're installing our XT60 connection. And this little jig helps hold XT60s. It's really, really awesome to have. So I'll leave a link to this down below. But what we're just going to go ahead and do is we're going to solder this up, connect it all up as you see here. And then we're going to do plus to plus, minus to minus on the 401 ESC and solder that all up. And we're also going to install the capacitor uh, that does help with video, uh, you know, noise in the video and also cleans up the noise in the system. Now what we're going to do is install our crossfire receiver. We're going to use the 5 volt pad, the ground, the transmit 2 pad, and also the receive pad. Um, and just make sure that you have it connected. Transmit goes to receive pin, and the receive pin goes to the transmit uh, UART. Um, if you're using FreeSky, you're going to want to go ahead and use um, SBUS, ground, and 5 volts. And I'm going to, use to go ahead and use a piece of double-sided tape here in a moment. And we're going to secure that on top of the flight controller. And then for the Immortal T antenna, we're going to go ahead and make that go on to the arm on the bottom. I feel like that's the most safest spot to put it. No damage from the props. And really no damage really from crashing either. It's pretty, pretty resilient down there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fit the DJI... FPV system into the quadcopter and I'm going to have it come right out the back that's where it should be on this frame and little tip the wire for the camera I actually did have to take my flight controller back off and route that between the flight controller and also uh, through the uh, top of the ESC uh, just so I had enough room with the cable and the camera in the front. Now we're going to do is install our camera in the front and it comes this frame comes with these little 3d printed pieces here so you can go ahead and secure those with the screws that it's provided with the actual frame itself. They're a little longer than the ones that come with the DJI unit, so I recommend using those. And I'll just go ahead and do fit this one side on first, and then we'll go ahead and do the other side and fit it into the top. Now we're going to do is install the cable that came with the flight controller, and connect that to the DJI unit and then plug that into the flight controller itself. It's super simple, no soldering of wires, just plug and play. I really like it. Now what I'm going to do is install the zip ties around the air unit and also the frame to secure it to the frame so it doesn't go anywhere. One little tip, I did find that my XT60 on the back was a really kind of bad spot because the antennas came out. So I would recommend having your XT60 plug come out the side and then just make sure that it clears the props and it comes out near the flight controller. So you can kind of remove that cable wire out of there because I did eventually. Now this frame also did come with some 3D printed pieces, uh, this antenna specifically. And this is pretty much used to secure your DJI antennas out of the back on this quadcopter. They do fit really, really snugly, and, but they're really, really secure. So what we want to do is get your antennas for the DJI unit and just slide them right into the back. Like so. And then they kind of just pop into the back and stay there. And then what we'll go ahead and do, I did this actually off camera because I wasn't able to see but I did to secure the MMCX connectors to the antennas to the DJI air unit. 
Now we're securing the top plate to it and pretty much wrapping everything up. So let's go ahead and secure the top plate with all the screws. And then we can go ahead and get a weight and see what the final quad copper looks like. So here it is all done. Didn't put the straps on the props on it yet because I still need to set it up in beta flight. But let's go ahead and get a weight on this DGI build we did. And it looks like we got 352 grams, which is really respectable considering the DGI unit. It does weigh a little bit more than other VTX systems. And uh, it does use a little bit bigger frame as well as other freestyle quads. So it's really respectable. And I am really kind of impressed with how little bit it actually does weigh considering um, all the actual things we had to put in it for the HD system. So stay tuned to the channel because what we're going to do next is we're going to bring this out and do a freestyle flight with it. And then I'll give you guys my final thoughts. But I appreciate you guys watching and uh, look forward to that video. I will leave a link to that video once that video was released for the freestyle flight. Also, let me know in the comments section down below if you've tried the DJI system, what your thoughts of it are. Um, will we be building the build that I just did? Uh, let me know down in the comments section down below and I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.